Hey everyone, Chuck from Functional Fly again, and today we're going to talk about a fly that I don't need to spend a lot of time introducing. Uh, the Adams is probably the most popular dry fly uh, in existence, been around for years, and it just works everywhere it goes uh, simply because it just does such a nice job of imitating so many different bugs that are out there. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a variation. I'm going to do a high vis uh, parachute version of this. Uh, I like fishing parachute versions because they uh, they always land well on the water. Uh, they ride it well, and uh, they uh, they just seem to uh, just seem to work very very nicely. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking. Let's get to tying. Okay, the hook I have in my vise is a Partridge SLD2 standard dry fly hook uh, that is barbless. I like this. It's got a nice wide gap hook gap to it, and uh, like the uh, like the black knuckle color, um, nice overall hook to to tie with. The thread that I'm using is Vivas Adot in black and you could go ahead and go with gray but I uh, I like to use the black on this so I'm gonna go ahead and start in a couple millimeters behind the hook eye I'm gonna wind back close to the hook point and then come back just about two or three turns I'm gonna start my parachute post on this uh, just a shade farther back than where you would typically tie in uh, your wings if you were tying a conventional upright wing fly. And the material that I'm using for my post, uh, this is an Antron yarn, and the color is a shrimp pink. And I like this color for my high vis flies because it seems to work very well in both low light situations or flat light as well as bright sunlight and uh, the Antron yarn tends to be a little bit thick for tying this is a size 12 and so I don't really need that much bulk in the post so I have removed about half the volume of it and Gonna go ahead, tie that in with a couple of pinch wraps right up on top. And then I like mine to sit a little bit underneath, so I'm gonna just gonna take that and twist it right under the post, right under the hook shank. And then I'm gonna bring both sides back up towards the top. Take a couple of turns on either side and then I'll do what I call helicopter turns just around the post and we don't need to go up too far at this point all I'm looking to do is put that post in the position where I want it which is about a quarter of the way down the hook shank a quarter to three-eighths of the way and I like where that's sitting so now we're good to go I don't like to have the Antron sticking up too far. This is comfortable to work with because I can uh, I can comfortably comfortably grab onto it when I need it, but it's not so long that it's going to interfere with my tying. I'm going to take a couple of turns back and then one turn forward. And the reason I'm doing this is let me go ahead and get that one piece of Antron out of the way. When I tie in my tail material. I want to tie in on top of the thread. I don't want to try to tie in on the bare hook shank. And what I have here is I have two large uh, feathers, uh, hackle feathers. One is a brown, 
One is a Grizzly, and I've taken these off of the very top and back of the neck of the, of the cape uh, because I need some longer fibers. I want the I want the tail fibers to extend about a hook length or maybe even slightly longer beyond the bend of the hook. So by taking these feathers, lining up their quills, I can get the uh, I can get the hackle fibers and see what length I'm going to need. And then also make sure that the tips are aligned. Then I can just come in, grab a bunch which I've taken a pretty healthy clump here. Now I have these and I want, again, I want the, uh, the tail to be the length of the full hook from the eye to the hook to the bend. So that's the part that I want to have extending off the back, which leaves me this much to tie in with. Now the very tips there are going to have a little bit of residue from the stem, so I'm going to trim that back, remeasure to see where I am, and now I'm going to wind down on the hook just a little bit, so again I'm going to be able to tie in on the thread, and then with a sort of a loose collaring wrap to grab all the material, now I'm coming in making some turns with more thread pressure and I'm going to check the overall length and that's sitting really pretty well as in terms of proportion. Now I want to make sure that those fibers stay up towards the top so I'm going to raise the angle of those hackle feathers as I'm tying in that keeps everything up towards the top and then as I get back towards the bend of the hook where I'm making my last turns I'm backing off on my thread pressure a little bit so that those, those fibers don't splay out too much. If I really crank that down, uh, it's going to, uh, they're going to they're gonna go all over the place. Um, and you can see that there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of splaying there, but, uh, but that's, that looks natural to me. The dubbing on this, uh, there's all kinds of really good dubbings out there. Uh, synthetic and natural. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit old school. Uh, this is muskrat under fur, which was the original uh, material that was called for with, uh, with the atoms. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking these fibers and just sort of picking them out and hand blending them. Uh, great idea if you've, uh, if you've got the ability to get one is to get like a spice or small coffee grinder and you can cut off uh, bits of the hide and then put it in that blender and that will uh, that will make the process a lot faster. When you're tying dubbing in for dry flies can't stress enough how important it is to be sparse with your material you're really just looking to more or less cover the thread so you can see what it looks like I'm putting on here is just little wisps of material but then when you uh, when you bind them down onto the thread they start to accumulate fairly quickly and then Go ahead and start to make your way forward. I'm going to want to stop right behind that post. So I'm happy with the way that that abdomen is looking. And now I have a brown and grizzly hackles. Now when I'm tying a parachute, I like to go down one to two sizes uh, on, my, 
on my hackles. So on a size 12 hook like this, I like to go down to something between a 14 and a 16. And the reason is, is that on a conventional hackle, uh, they size the hackle uh, so that the fiber is approximately the length of the shank of the hook. On these, uh, because the post is already a quarter to a third the way back, uh, if you go with that full size hackle, uh, the hackle tends to extend well out into the tail, whereas I like to keep it uh, more, uh, more closely within the boundaries of the, the hook shank itself. So I've already stripped away the underfur, but what you can also see, if I can splay these out just a little bit, is you can see that I've stripped away a couple more fibers on the right side than on the left, probably a quarter of an inch or so. That's going to help those first couple turns of hackle uh, lay more smoothly against the post and so it's going to make it a little bit less prone to trying to twist on you as you are as you're wrapping this hackle back in. So I'm going to go ahead even the tips and I've left close to a half an inch down and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tie this in right about in the middle of that bare section of quill because I wanna have room to wrap up the post and I'm gonna make one turn, I made one turn in back and now I'm gonna make a couple turns in front and I'm binding those tips down in front And then I'm going to come back, make one turn right behind the post. And now, I'm going to make more helicopter turns. And what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm winding those quills right up against the post. This does a couple of things. Helps get the hackle fibers where I want, or the hackles where I want them to be. But it also helps to reinforce the post so that when I am wrapping down, uh, it's a little easier to hold everything in place. My thread is now right back down behind the post, and I'm going to finish my body. So I'm going to take just a little bit more of that muskrat fur. first thing I'm going to do is make a couple of X wraps right underneath the post and that's going to help fill in that area underneath where the post is so I don't have a break in the body as you're looking at it from underneath. I'll take a little bit more. Slide that up. Now, for wrapping the hackles, you can try and you can do this both hackles at the same time if you like. Uh, for newer tires, I would suggest starting with one. And all I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and keeping some constant tension on the hackle itself. I'm going to start winding, and each successive turn goes right below the one in front of it. just a little bit so you can see how each one is sitting under there and about four turns is uh, is sufficient so then I'm going to bring it the hackle to the front side to me I'm going to take the thread and go over the hook shank but under the hackles and secure it that way feather away. Now with the brown, I'm going to do the same thing. But this time, in order to get it to come down through, you're going to have to kind of wiggle it just a little bit, just so it doesn't, uh, doesn't trap 
the grizzly fibers under it. And again, make your way down through. Take your time with this. It doesn't need to be, uh, this is not the good time to rush. So again, four or five turns. Bring it in front of you. I'm going to take one turn around the hook shank itself. Then come back over the hook shank but under the fibers. Two to three turns to secure it. Trim away the excess. I've got one turn of thread there that I'm just going to roll that up underneath. And then you can go ahead and do a whip finish directly underneath all the hackles on the post. Uh, I would recommend for most people that you take just one more small pinch of dubbing. And when you're putting this dubbing on, you can squeeze it pretty tightly right up against the thread. Don't be afraid to put some good pressure on that. Bring this up. Add just a little bit more. Take a look at it from underneath. And I'm going to back that off because I can see one turn of thread that I want to uh, that I don't want to be able to see. looking better. Let me take my whip finish. One. And I really don't like to use cements or anything if necessary if, if possible on uh, on dry flies. I'd rather just come in and do a second whip finish and trust that that's going to do the job. So the fly is essentially set. I'm happy with the way that those hackles are. I'm happy with the proportion of the fly. Now I'm just going to take and pull that post up twist it slightly and then I like to cut it a slight downward angle and just press that down to see what the fly is going to look like on the water one more stray take a look at it from underneath see what the fish is going to see and there you go there's your atoms so there you have it, uh, probably the most popular dry fly ever done. Uh, hope you're enjoying these videos. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions on flies you'd like to see me tie up for you, please go ahead and uh, put a comment down below or send me an email, chuck at functionalfly.com, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks.